So, Mark, I want to move to you. Uh, you know, we all talk about minimal disease or assessment of minimal disease and how can it can impact our future therapy, whether we go for chemotherapy, transplantation, clinical trials. Can you tell me where we're standing today with the MRD assessment in AML? Currently, things are still up in the air, but I think a lot of progress is going to be made very soon. Uh, we have fairly recent data uh, looking at the value of following an NPM1 mutation. It's a pretty sensitive test. Certainly, it's only applicable right now to the subset of patients who have an NPM1 mutation. Uh, and if they've got it, you can follow that after they achieve a remission and actually predict which patients are going to do well. We don't know yet what to do about it Correct. if we detect it. But uh, if you don't the have the NPM1 mutation, so uh, how you assess for MRD? Let's say you don't have the CBF leukemia nor the APL, where we do PCR for these patients. But standard case of AML, you assess MRD by flow. So the problem is, of course, you've got sort of the taste great, less filling. We've got the flow people on one side, the uh, DNA-based people Correct. on the other. And where do you come down? The, the problem across the field is a lack of standardization. Okay. If you go around the table of people who assess MRD, and they, they all, they're sort of mad geniuses. They each know how to do it really well. They say, can you teach someone else in, yes, and we in have the expertise of somewhere to actually do that? And, and you kind of get this look that maybe they can't. No, I have a question then. Let's say, regardless of how we assess MRD, or next generation, or flow, but you have somebody who started therapy with bad features. Let's say, diploid karyotype, literally ITD positive or a uh, complex karyotype, and they respond very well, and they become MRD negative. Mm -hmm. Will MRD status trumps baseline features? Well, in your decision for yes, trust, right? because well, for one thing, the problem is having any form of detectable MRD predicts for a disaster Correct. in a transplant. So, again, we're still not sure what to do about MRD when we see it. We know it's bad. Uh, I think. Again, the problem that we're having is a lack of standardization in the techniques. No okay. one can agree what MRD is. Correct. So uh, the regulatory agencies are, are pushing quite strongly appropriately for us to develop a standardized MRD assay for different subtypes of AML. For example, for FLT3, the conventionally available assay to detect a FLT3 mutation is nearly useless for MRD. but uh, there is the technology and there will be very shortly, I believe this year, well, CLIA certified yeah. assays for an ITD mutation at a level like BCR ABLE. Okay. So that brings me to a consolidation approach. Marty, if you have somebody with the MRD positive or not, when you decide to go for transplantation in first remission? Well, actually, allogeneic transplantation, I think, in first remission is our most potent anti-leukemic therapy, even in favorable risk. By favorable, you mean non-CBF? No, no, favorable, no. even in CBF patients. Okay. The problem is, in that, in that situation, in general, I think the feeling is that the treatment-related mortality, transplant-related mortality, does not, does not justify. Correct. But I think in, in anyone that has intermediate risk or unfavorable risk, in general, we try to move toward an allogeneic transplant in first remission if they're a suitable candidate and they have a suitable donor. Okay, and for those who are MRD positive, you get to the transplantation. I mean, obviously, we all like to do clinical trial for this patient, but by default, somebody in the community who had induction consolidation and remain MRD positive. Well, as Mark said, there are emerging data to suggest that those patients fare very unfavorably with allogeneic transplantation. So I think we do what we can to try to get them into an MRD negative state. I want to be. I want to be clear, though. I think in the community, and even in many academic centers, MRD assessment has not yet for the reasons that were outlined by Mark, because. entered the algorithm of how to decide what to do. Because they're not standardized. Right, and even so, so I mean, you'd, Mark, what would you do with a patient who was, had a FLT3 ITD and became MRD negative by flow cytometry in a, by, by Dr. Wood in Seattle? Would you not transplant that patient? Of course, you'd still transplant oh, that I, patient. Of course, I would still transplant So we don't use it yet, is the point. <laughs> so before I move to